Hi, it's Wolf Cup 7, and this time I'm playing a rather obscure PC game from 1995. This was based on the popular animated movie from Denmark from 1993, the jungle creature Hugo, and the reason this is obscure is because this was never released outside of Scandinavia. This English translation is fan translated. And even here in Scandinavia, it, this was very poorly marketed and distributed, which might explain why I never even heard of this game until a few days ago, and why I never had this back then, even though I was a huge fan of these movies and we'd had our first PC a year or two earlier. But I would have loved this as a child, even though this is very very challenging, even for adults. So I can't imagine a child beating this game or even getting very far. In fact, the art director slash producer of this game mentioned that even, you know, the average seven-year-old had difficulties even passing through the first level. This has a two-player mode, but it's not the typical one where you advance one game together, but it's two individual games where like, when the first player dies, the second player gets to pick up wherever they left off in their game. It's kind of cool that way, too. This really feels as if you're playing the movie. Because not only are all levels loosely based on scenes from the movie, but you see these graphics are lovely. So colorful and very smooth, with loads of different animations. Uh, the animation was actually inspired by Disney's The Lion King PC game, and it shows. And I especially love that all the characters look exactly like they should, and this has moving music too. Adding to the difficulty of this game is that every drop, bump, fall, drip, they all take away your energy. But on the other hand, all these fruits that keep falling, they all give energy back, so it's not too bad. Oh, and he automatically eats them, so you don't, you don't really miss that many. So spiding bugs are cute, I'm actually glad he doesn't kill them, but just knocks them over. Uh, normally you would die falling from this high, but you have to do this, and I think those leaves kind of slow down the fall. Uh, this is a safe point, they're not marked in any specific way, but I think Whenever there's a scenery change in the level, that's probably a safe point. As in, if you die, you get to start from there instead of the beginning of the level. Uh, these levels are very short, actually, only maybe uh, two or three, two, two to five minutes long. Just that. This is so difficult that it can take much longer. I have played this for two or three days now, maybe a couple of hours per day, so I would I would call this a semi-skilled run. But I did have to edit some deaths away, so this let's play wouldn't run too long. But this isn't a semi-skilled run just because I've played this game for a few hours. I grew up in the era of 2D platforming games, playing some very difficult ones too. So for a first timer or someone with little experience, this probably wouldn't be enjoyable. He's supposed to fall through these leaves and branches into the human's net. But for some reason I don't get the animation, I only get the sound effect. There's probably just something wrong with the file, as I'm playing this through a DOS box. Thank you.
So now you've been captured and have to escape this boat. This was originally released uh, in CD-ROM format and that one has movie clip cutscenes but it could also detect if the computer didn't have enough RAM so it would install a more compact version instead. But the physical copy, as much as I would love to have it for my collection, is nowhere to be found. Literally it's not even listed on Amazon or eBay or anywhere. Uh, it couldn't be played on new computers because it only works on Windows 95 and 98. I think it might work on some newer Windows systems but not even nearly all of them and certainly not on Windows 10. But this is downloadable online and works just fine uh, with DOSBox. Not perfectly but fine. And I think the downloading is legal too, I think, because in his blog post about this game, the art director slash producer of this game mentions that this is considered so to be so-called abandonware, abandoned software, and he links to the website where this can be downloaded from. I may very well end up showing you just about all the ways you can die in this game, and very unintentionally. I don't know, yesterday this part was a piece of cake. Now I couldn't suck much harder. It's pretty much just about the state of mind, I think, because the controls in this game are perfectly responsive, which is great, because if they weren't, this would be impossible. Back in the early and mid 90s when these movies were first released, they were very popular here in Scandinavia and Europe in general, so I was surprised to find out that the English version didn't exist until 2005, and even more surprised about how disrespectful it is to the movie's creators. Like they didn't just dub it, they actually rewrote some of the lines to be completely different lines. Like I understand that some some lines always need to be changed a bit big to uh, to fit the language to the character's mouth movements, but the English version went way too far, and they added loads of lines to moments that are supposed to be silent and speaking with the atmosphere and characters' expressions and so on. It's like they're treating children as if they can't see what's on the screen or read expressions. And they didn't even leave the video footage alone. They cut out many moments and actually rearranged some of the clips. Like, I understand that some moments always end up cut according to what the region's film certification people deem appropriate, but there's no need to rearrange anything. So, yeah. If you want to see these movies, uh, I'm not sure if the video footage problem is only a US release problem or in other English regional releases, but just to be safe, don't go for the English dub versions. Just try to find the Danish spoken version with English subtitles. It doesn't officially exist, but in 2008, a fan kindly subtitled a Danish spoken version. Uh, the first film is at least at this time at dailymotion.com. And I'm hoping the sequel Hugo the Movie Star also resurfaces at some point. It doesn't matter to me personally all that much because my country's versions are 
pretty much the same as the Danish version. But I would still like to know what the Danish lines actually literally are, especially the songs. This level has a very interesting design, in that those power lines are directly attached to a window, window frame of a house, and to a child's room, even. And Hugo is supposed to be about the size of an adult cat, perhaps a little bit smaller. But in this level, he's just about the same size with a book, and some building blocks are bigger than him and pieces of candy are humongous compared in comparison picky banks are about his size and pencils too but i do understand that you know there needed to be obstacles and so on but it just makes this a little bit bizarre but on the other hand, in the movie too, the proportions weren't exactly perfect, because again, he was supposed to be about the size of an adult cat, but somehow he fit into a child's dollhouse. In the movie, Hugo hates being hugged and kissed, at least by people. But he loves being hugged and kissed by Rita the fox, because he's in love with her, and she's in love with him. But it's more obvious in the sequel film, Hugo the movie star. In that one they actually build a home together, and several times do this adorable kissing thingy. It's a canon sequel too. Uh, with the same writer and I think the director was the same too. Also all the original voice actors return and the plot relates strongly to the first movie. Also both movies were released in movie theaters so it appears that this was always planned to be a two-part story. Uh, anyway, Rita and Hugo, they are one of my absolutely favorite all couples, movie couples of all time because they're so adorable, plus also delightfully weird, because they're completely different species from completely different worlds, the jungle and the city. This level is kind of a fun one, but only for a time. This can quite easily ruin the game for you. If you have some experience with 2D platformers, you know that these kind of levels are always the hardest. And this is not an exception. Quite the contrary actually, this seems to go on forever. There are a couple of cheat codes in this game. Uh, one is um, extra life code. It's simply pushing F1 inside the game. It will give you a whole bunch of extra lives, like I think 5 or 6. And you can use it as many times as you wish. And therefore have unlimited continues from whatever save point you are on. The second cheat code is a level skip code. As in you can skip to any level you want to. Which is good because um, this game doesn't have a password feature. You can't save the game and come back to it later. I'll cut this recording here and start a new file. Okay. Let's go. Uh, let's go, Rita. 
Does pausing the game help? Getting hurt? These next two levels are a little bit different because you control both characters. Uh, technically you're still Hugo, but Rita does everything he does. And if she gets hurt, you get hurt. If she dies, you die. Uh, sometimes you need to keep distance to her in order to succeed and sometimes you need to keep her close. Uh, it's a different kind of challenge here and in my opinion it's a nice change of pace. Uh, yeah, that level skip code is uh, first push caps lock and then let go of that and push F12 and insert simultaneously. I would love to have a bush toy pair of Hugo and Rita with magnetic noses so they would kind of be kissing because it would actually replicate many of the scenes from the sequel movie. There are such bush toys uh, for the Lion King with Simba and Noah and Kovu and Kiara. But I don't think there is one for Hugo and Marito, which is sad because they are the one couple where that would actually make sense. Because Simba and Nala in the Lion King movies were never romantically involved as children, and Kiara and Kobu weren't really either. In their movie there is an indication that they might like, like each other, but they knew each other for like, for like five minutes. Hugo and Rita aren't children in these movies, or at least not young children. More like in their mid-teens or late teens. Hugo's age isn't specified, but at the end of the first film Rita says to him that he should come back the next year, because she'll be grown up by then and have her own den and that he could live with her there. So I'm just assuming that Hugo is supposed to be around the same age. Although their voice actors are like 30 years apart. Hugo's voice actor was 48 to 51 years old when these movies were made and Rita's was in her early 20s. And I'm talking about the original, the Danish voice actors, although also in my language dubbing they have quite an age difference. The guy was 45 to 48 years old and the woman was 32 to 35 years old. That's 13 years of age difference. I couldn't find a, who the English dubbers were or how old they were with a quick Google search. Uh, but yeah, if a character isn't clearly a child or if his or her age isn't specifically mentioned in a movie, I personally do imagine them being around the same age as their voice actors, uh, with animal characters of course in human years. But in this case I do believe that Hugo was meant to be a young adult, like Rita, because of his behavior. There's a third movie, a second sequel, and unfortunately it's gone on too. The same writer, the same directors, the same voice actors, and oh my god it's painful. Okay, I acknowledge I can't give an entirely fair review because I haven't seen the full movie, but I can tell you my observation of the trailer. It is by far the most horrible, terrible, god-awful CGI I have ever seen. And compare that to the beautiful hand-drawn animation of the first two movies, it's even more painful. But that's not all. The basic plot is almost identical to the first movie's plot, so it's not even very original. 
the only appeal of that movie to me is that it features Hugo and Rita's child. But once I saw a photo of that child, even that appeal was killed. Because it's the most unoriginal design you can possibly come up with from those two species. It's like basically a yellow fox with a slightly different bone structure. And I think he had Hugo's tail. It was so disappointing. And I do realize that most of my complaints have to do with the outside appearance of the movie and one of the characters and the unoriginality of the plot. But that's enough for me to conclude that it's a shitty sequel. I guess I shouldn't say never, but I will most likely never watch the movie because I'm genuinely afraid that there's something in it that will ruin the first two movies. And and it's just just I can't believe they did this. It didn't need a second sequel. And if they had to do it, why couldn't they put passion in it and respect the original art form of 2D animation and of hand-drawn animation and all that. And one more thing, why did they have to change the name of the character? Like, who the hell is Amazon Jack? What was wrong with Hugo and why would he change his name? Like, or... Uh, no, it doesn't mean the child. Uh, whatever, it's just... It's just painful and I won't be watching that movie. I don't want to ruin my childhood memories by witnessing the whole damn thing. Very few shitty sequels make me angry, but there was just something very special about the, the Jungle Creature Hugo movies to me. They were, well, not particularly a big part of my childhood, but they were dear to me. I really wish that sequel, that second sequel, didn't exist. I was afraid that this level would be or turn out to be either a labyrinth or an underwater level, especially as in the movie they do dive under that sewer water, but fortunately this is neither. This is easy to navigate, and though you can go the wrong way, it's very easy to find your way back. It's just those jumps with Rita tagging along that are challenging. Also, there's that one switch that you have to turn, because if you don't, it will be pitch black dark and you can't go back. This is the last level, the 7th or the 5th, depending on how you look at it. Because this last level has been split into three parts, the cats, the sewers and this. So you better use the extra life cheat code here, if you don't want to be back all the way back at the beginning of the cats whenever you lose all your lives. Or maybe it takes you to the last save point of that part. Well anyway, it'll take you backwards a whole lot. This last part is quite short, but at the end of this there is a nearly impossible point that will probably take months of active practicing to succeed in. So I won't be beating this game here, I will attach here the art director slash producer of this game playing this last part and a little bit of the end boss. So you can see a bit of that too, but even he couldn't beat this, so...
uh, here you have to hop up this plank the way I did earlier down there and then leap to hang on those hook ropes and swing yourself over to the next and the next until you are on the top of those other boxes on the right where Isabella waits. For some reason it's much much more difficult with this plank than the previous one. In all my multiple hours of playing this game, I have succeeded to hop up this plank only twice. And even then I didn't make it past the first rope. And I haven't found any merciful bug that would let me through the boxes on the right. <sighs> Actually this is, this is quite free of bugs, this game. So far I have only found one. Uh, in this level, in the cat's part, you can hop through the dumpster instead of going up the ladders. But it doesn't, it doesn't always work, so I know it's a bug. Uh, yeah, this part can easily suck all the fun out of this game. Especially if you're stubborn and just can't quit trying. Uh, okay, this is next to impossible. Uh, it, it's that's why I said it's it could take take months to practice this part. Just, uh, I mean. You have to take at least a few days or maybe even weeks break from this if you want to keep this game fun. Oh, and another problem is that even if you do make it to the final boss, whenever she catches you, it'll take you all the way back here and you have to do this part over again, every single time. And if that wasn't enough, this part has a time limit. It feels quite long, but still, a time limit with this kind of a challenge. It's just cruel, especially for the target group, which is young kids. Like, what were they thinking? <sighs> okay, I think I'll try as long as the timer lets me, and then I'll skip to the outro so you can see that. No, wait, first I'll show the art director slash producer playing the end boss a little bit and then I skip to the outro. If the fourth level with the skateboarding wasn't so long and if this part wasn't so unfair, I think this game would deserve 10 out of 10. But as is, I think I'll give this 8.5 out of 10, because overall this is very entertaining and loads of fun, especially for fan of the movies. But I think anyone who enjoys challenging 2D platformers could enjoy this. My favorite levels would be the first one and the third one, as in the jungle and the the child's room. Also the catch level is kind of fun. The sewers was... It was actually... Well, it's not as interesting as the others, but it was a welcome easy level after the fourth and the fifth. The skateboarding and the cats. Okay, yeah, I could run the timer out, but I think I'll take an easier way. Well, actually you can quit the game at any time by pushing S and choosing quit the game, but I'd rather do this this way. Somehow this feels less like giving up.
This final boss seems very basic and quite easy in itself, which is good because that other part. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that someday I actually get here and could try it for myself. You know, the way she looks when she runs around would otherwise be very silly, but if you know the character of Isabella, you know that that actually fits her quite well. She's, she's like really spoiled and bitchy and almost borderline insane. I think she actually does go insane at the end of the movie. It's actually quite creepy. They dreamt of making another, even better Hugo game, but this didn't sell even nearly well enough for that to happen. Again because of poor marketing and poor distribution. And it's too bad, I would have loved many Hugo games, different kinds. In the description box below, I have linked to Dan Harder's blog post about making this game, and he links to the playlist of him playing this game as well as to the website where you can download this game. I'm hoping that someday, if this fanbase happens to have any people who are good at game programming, and if this game gets enough spotlight, maybe someday there could be some fan games out of this one. Someday. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found the commentary interesting. Stay tuned, I may not be gaming as often as I planned to, but every now and then there will be another Let's Play of retro PC games and video games. Again, thank you for watching.